because I, I think after the Stony Brook game, there were a contingent of fans that were upset at how that game played out. Um, what what would constitute a bad performance by Oregon? Like what what going into this game? What should be an expectation? Like I don't know if there is a score. Like you could Oregon could win thirty five nothing, and I would walk away being like. Well, did they score 35 points in the first half and then put their, their backups in and just went super vanilla, and that's why they didn't do anything offensively? Like, I could be sold that that's okay, but I also could be sold a 35-7 to seven win would be a poor performance. Yeah, I don't know if it's score again. I, I, I really think it comes down to, like, personnel in the second half. Like, if, if we're going to have to play at starters into the fourth quarter, that's a, that's that's just really disappointing. Um, this, this, I mean, cause you look at the schedule and, and, I, and we've talked about how the Pac-12 is not good and I'm not saying they are, but there aren't necessarily on the schedule, a lot more opportunities where I think you could have a quarter, two full quarters in the second half playing Ty Thompson, playing a bunch of young guys. This, this is a, a prime opportunity for that. Arizona is, is the worst team in the conference. It's at home. They still don't have a clue who their quarterback is. I mean, it's kind of all the makings for a game where Oregon should win by a lot. Um, so I will be disappointed if, honestly, like, last five minutes of the third quarter, if Anthony Brown still has to be in the game, if Alex Forsythe still has to be in the game, if, you know, Johnny Johnson and C.J. Verdell are still playing. I mean, that, that to me would constitute kind of a disappointing performance. Um, they're going to win the game, period. So, like, that part is pretty cut and dry. It's just to me, like, do you get enough opportunities for your – your reserves to really get out there and, and show some things. Cause again, these are, these are really important opportunities. Oregon's learned really, really, I mean, they've learned a tough lesson this year with the next man up thing and getting your next man up out there before they are the actual next man up, right? Like before this injuries do take place, cause you never know when they're going to happen. I just think those are super valuable. And again, even just knowing that Ty Thompson played about two and a half or about one, I should say one and a half quarters of pretty good football last week. I think that makes everybody feel a little bit better about the backup quarterback situation. So you want more opportunities like that, I think. Yeah, I 100% agree. I, I think in terms of a score perspective, a disappointing game could be probably not hitting the 40s and not covering, mostly not covering, I think, because I, I think that would say more about Oregon's defense than with their offense. But yeah, by midway through the third quarter, um, if there are more than know, like probably eight starters on the field on both sides of the ball, like it's going to, it's just, it's probably too much. It's like, why Why are these guys in? Like, shouldn't this be the time for Jeffrey Bossa and everybody else and players like that to get on the field and get reps and earn them? Um, I, I have a hard time thinking Oregon's going to have a disappointing win. I think they're just going to have a solid win. I know sometimes fans' expectations are a little too much where they want Oregon to win, you know, 64 to 10 and just make it a no-show for Arizona. Uh, I think fans were disappointed against Stony Brook by the margin of victory because it was Stony Brook. If that same margin of victory happens against Arizona, I think people would be happier with it because it's a Pac-12, it's a conference opponent. It's a conference game. It's the first one of the season going into Stanford. Um, I, I I think it's it basically comes down to who's playing in the midway through the third and how much Oregon wins by in terms of what could present a, a – uh, a disappointing win. I think for me, I'll look at like how efficient or how hard did Oregon have to work to extend drives or get off the football field? Like, does Arizona convert a lot of third downs? Do they face a lot of third and shorts or do they face a lot of third and longs? Um, how, how often does Oregon face a third down? situation and when they have the football and what kind of third downs are they having to convert if it's consistently a third and eight a third and seven you know something of that nature then they probably weren't very efficient offensively but if it's a third and one third and two third and three those are really easy to convert and that's probably meaning you're winning on first down and, and getting positive yardage in your first two plays uh what do you do in the red zone like are you converting touchdowns or are you settling for Field goals. So those are the things that I'll be paying attention to. Um, turnovers, obviously, do you create and do you limit your turnovers like they've done the first three games? Um, I'm not really worried about the score. Like, obviously, yeah, if if this is a game in the fourth quarter and 
the start of the fourth, Oregon still has to have their starters in the football game. You do have to wonder why, what led to this. I, I wouldn't be too worried if it was a similar first half where Oregon's leading by 10 at halftime or something of that nature. Um, it'd probably be a little bit of a disappointment, but football's a game that's played in 60 minutes, not 30. And you have to judge the full you know, scope of it to look at it that way. But I'll be paying more attention to just how efficient Oregon is opposed to, you know, a final score result um, in that one. All right, that'll do it for us here on the Austin Audible's podcast. Thank you for listening to today's show. And the next time that you hear our voices on the show or see us on YouTube, go to uh, Oregon Sports, uh, Oregon Ducks on 24-7 Sports uh, on YouTube. Like the page there as well. Um, next time you see and hear us, it will be late, late Saturday night, probably maybe Sunday morning when you wake up our post-game reaction podcast uh, from the Oregon-Arizona football game. So until that time, make sure to go to duckterritory.com for all your Oregon Duck football coverage needs. We've got you taken care of on that site. And until then, you've been listening to the Odds and Audibles podcast. Talk to you later, folks. Peace.